get started here. Where's my esteemed <laughs> county manager? He evacuated. <laughs> <laughs> he evacuated. Yeah. yeah. All right. While uh, while I'm waiting for him to show up, we'll go ahead and get started. I know everybody's time is valuable. We got a lot to do. Uh, the reason we're here, of course, is because of uh, Hurricane Matthew, major hurricane that is slowly inching its way northward as we speak. Uh, still a lot of uncertainty from the National Hurricane Center and, of course, the National Weather Service out of Jacksonville. But we know that we're going to get some very strong tropical force winds and probably they're forecasting five to seven inches of rain. The majority of the uh, storm issues will probably start Thursday night and then go through Saturday morning sometime. So having said that, some of the things that have already taken place and will take place after this board meets is we are already in the process of notifying our debris removal folks. <laughs> Imagine that, commissioners. So we won't go through that again. So uh, they, are, they are on standby just waiting for us to notify them as to when, when to start and how to proceed in one thing. Uh, Glenn County Schools, just for your information, will be closed tomorrow and Friday. Uh, college is already closed, closed up as of this morning, and will not reopen till Sunday. Glenn County offices will be closed Friday. Uh, we'll be open tomorrow for business as usual, but schools will be closed on Friday. Uh, excuse me, offices will be closed on Friday. Uh, as far as the court system, then uh, the sheriff will talk to the judges over there and the decision will be made on what's going to happen with the courts as, because, as you're aware, we have a trial going on out of Cobb County. The, uh, we are calling for a voluntary evacuation of the Barrier Islands, which includes, of course, St. Simons, Sea Island, Little St. Simons, Jekyll, that will become effective immediately and all low-lying areas and mobile homes. At this point in time, we do not anticipate a evacuation for the mainland unless, like I said, you live in a low-lying area or a mobile home. At 12 o'clock, we have another National Weather Service briefing and another meeting with some of the stakeholders. So this thing could change. And if it changes, then certainly we will notify the public accordingly. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not used to walking that fast. <laughs> uh, we are closing the animal control shelter immediately. Uh, we have already made arrangements with the state. We are moving the animals to Waycross Fairgrounds, Department of Agriculture, will be there to help us, uh, provide us with any kind of assistance we need as far as uh, our animals. Right now we're probably going to be moving about 75 animals or so. And so they're in the process of, of getting those moved. We are bringing the Emergency Operations Center up for full activation as of 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. 7 p.m. tomorrow evening it will be brought up. It will stay brought up until the, all of the parties involved determine that it's no longer needed. We're activating the Need a Ride program, which is a program for anybody that does not have their own transportation for the islands, because that's the only place right now that we've called for a voluntary evacuation. The pickup point on the island is Harris Teeter, and there is a pickup point at Lanier Plaza in Brunswick, and that pickup point is for people that need a ride that have P 
pets. So that facility will be available there at the near plaza for them. The uh, air show has been canceled. Uh, Mr. Cowman has understood that our first priority is to the safety of, of everyone in this, in this community. And we just don't have the assets to support both the air show and what's going to be needed to be done over the next few days here in this community to make sure that everybody remains safe. So uh, we're looking forward to March. Uh, we're closing Blythe Island Regional Park, uh, notifying everybody there that they've got to get out and that uh, it, it, will, it will be closed. Special functional needs, those are folks that are bedridden, uh, just are in such poor health that they have no way of getting out on their own. We will start that evacuation uh, for those personnel with the help of the Department of, Hel of, of uh, Health and other agencies, and we will start moving them out tomorrow morning. So... Uh, as soon as this meeting is over, uh, I will ask my fellow commissioners to, uh, with me, declare a state of emergency for Glenn County. Uh, state of Georgia Governor Deal yesterday declared a state of emergency for 13 Georgia counties, of which, of course, Glenn is one of those. And um, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina have all now declared states of emergency. So, having said that, uh, one of the things that we've emphasized to our folks is that, you know, to take care of your families, uh, our, and I'm talking about our, our staff, our first responders, all those people, take care of your families, make sure that they're, all of their needs are met in, in one thing or another. And the other thing is that we want to speak with one voice. Everybody that is a stakeholder from the city, uh, state, county, etc., everything that goes out from Glen County goes out through Catherine, our PIO. Everything. And like I just said earlier in the meeting, she'll be working 24 hours a day, so it won't be no problem, and she'll, she'll take care of all that. And so, but she, she is a voice from this point on for Glenn County. So, having said that, uh, Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution declaring a state of emergency for Glenn County. Second. I have a motion to the second to adopt the resolution for state of emergency for Glenn County. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioners, do you have any questions as far as anything that we've pointed out? Yes, sir. Uh, commissioners, I just, as a, a, just a formality, uh, the reason for state calling this meeting in an emergency fashion is be due to the hurricane. That's one what? The, the reason for calling this meeting, we have a state on the record, the reason for calling this meeting, yes. and that reason is the hurricane. Right. So as that's a formality for the you, open meeting. You just act. did it. Thank so you. We're good. <laughs> Taken care of. Mr. Chairman, I know you've been on a short string this morning, and this thing is mighty fluid, but if you could provide us with a copy of your notes there of all those closings and where all the whatever uh, I, I can't remember um, all that stuff yeah. so if, if, we could, if we could get those in yeah. case people you know yeah in fact uh, no I'm the only one who has this <laughs> as soon as uh, as soon as the meeting's over with I'll ask uh, Sydney to run over to the clerks I mean to the county attorney's office and make a copy of this for all my fellow commissioners thank you so Having, go ahead, sir. Are we talking about also nursing homes? No, no, sir. Great question, Commissioner Booker. Uh, you know, one of the things that people have to understand, this was brought up at the meeting that we just came from over at the Pate Building. There's a little misunderstanding at times between a voluntary evacuation and a mandatory evacuation. For the most part, there is no difference. We've called for a voluntary evacuation, and we ask people to voluntarily leave the barrier islands and low-lying areas and mobile homes. If and when 
the Board of Commissioners and the, and the mayor of the city of Brunswick would call for a mandatory evacuation, nothing really changes for the most part. Mandatory evacuation does not mean that you can be forced out of your home. Nobody can force you to leave your home if you do not desire to. Now, I kiddingly say that if the storm or the hurricane or whatever the, the, the event is is bad enough, the county will issue tow tags to the people that stay, you know, so they'll be needed. But other than that, nobody can force you out of your home. In answer to Commissioner Booker's question, nursing homes are privately owned. They have to make their own decision as to whether or not they desire to evacuate. That decision is made exclusively by them. I can tell you, I believe that I heard this morning, and, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Marsh's Edge on St. Simon's may be getting ready to evacuate. Uh, what's Magnolia Manor is evacuating. Uh, the uh, medical facility on St. Simon's? I uh, No, the one there by the gym. So, oh, Charter Health. Yeah, Charter Health, I think, is the name of that now. Uh, I think they're evacuating. But as far as the nursing homes, that's, that's completely their decision. Mr. Chairman, I think we need to make the point, too, to people, if you decide to stay, the county may not be able to come help you. Yes, sir. Just so people understand that, if you make the decision to stay and this thing turns bad or turns ugly, you may be on your own. So if you make that decision, that's fine. It's your call. But don't rely on EMS or anybody else showing up to help you because they may not be able to get to you depending on what happens. Great point, Commissioner. Great point. Because, you know, people get this false sense of security that, you know, no matter how bad it gets, somebody's going to be there to rescue you. And... You know, as we have learned before, that's, that's just not the case. And, and just to reemphasize that when this storm starts, and it'll, it will probably start sometime Thursday, late Thursday night, then into Friday, Friday night, hopefully by late or mid-morning Saturday, Saturday afternoon, we'll start seeing some clearing and, and the, the weather diminish. And uh, once that happens, people have to understand they may be without power for a long period of time. Where with Hermine, we were very lucky. We had crews available, and they got in here, and they had the majority of our power restored in 72, excuse me, 48 to 72 hours. That may not be the case this time, folks. Uh, they have... You know, they're going to have the crews available, but because of the magnitude of this storm and the way it's going to impact the East Coast, uh, certain areas of the East Coast of the United States, uh, areas may be without power for a long time. Although I've already told Georgia Power, 124 Woodcrest Circle is on the top of their list. <laughs> Mr. 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 Commissioner, Chairman, quick question. Are we meeting tomorrow night? Great question. Uh, I, I would say, Aaron, uh, Alan, let's just go ahead and cancel tomorrow night. Since we're bringing the EOC up at 7 o'clock, we'll just cancel the meeting tomorrow night, and we'll just, uh, uh, we won't reschedule it. We'll just roll everything into the uh, third meeting in, in uh, the next meeting. So. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we cancel the meeting for Thursday night, please. Thank you, Second. Sir. Motion. Do you say, and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Tomorrow night's meeting is canceled. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I see the sheriffs here today. Uh, we didn't hear anything about the inmates in our facility. They're staying. Uh, they're staying where they're at. They're, and, you know, at this point in time, uh, inmates are staying where they're at. The sheriff has no plans to move anything out. Like I said, he's. He'll be talking later today and tomorrow with the judges to see what they want to do as far as uh, Friday and one thing. And Sheriff, if you'd like to.
Thank you, Sheriff. Um, Mr. Chairman, based on the speed of the storm, do you know about when we might need to make a different decision than just voluntary or no, understand the, the, um, the impact of the storm on our area? Um, if, if it's just going to be flooding, um, <laughs> strong winds, or... We really need to. We'll we'll be getting. We'll, out of dodge. Yes, sir. We'll be getting tropical force winds starting probably uh, late, late tomorrow night, and then all day Friday, possibly. They're predicting right now that we will have tropical force winds, which range in the from thirty to seventy miles an hour. At 74, of course, it becomes a hurricane. It's no longer a tropical storm. But we could have those type of winds across Glen County right now for at least 24 hours or more, which is not good. Uh, as you know, we have just here in the last couple of days had a great deal of rainfall. And so the ground is wet, and we start getting heavy winds in one thing or another. It, those trees are going to start coming down and so that is not a good thing because they come down on houses and one thing or another so it, it answered your question uh, starting late thursday night into saturday morning is going to be the roughest part for us right now they're estimating possibly five to seven inches of additional rainfall in glen county so, would that be a time that we do mandatory for the islands we're doing voluntary for certain areas now it, it will probably and, and I will look to Mr. Hours and, and Mr. Powell on this but I would say right now that you know we got the 12 o'clock briefing this evening or this, at noon and we got another one at 6 this evening and then we got another one tomorrow morning if things change dramatically and, and I'm talking about all of a sudden now we're under hurricane force winds instead of tropical force winds, then at that point in time we will probably make a decision to call for a mandatory evacuation of, of the barrier islands. So, Mr. And depending on, I'm sorry, Commissioner, depending on where the track is, at that time it may include portions of the mainland. We cannot rule that out because this storm is still very very, very unpredictable. That's where it's going to finally do. And one of the things that, that is interesting is right now, if, if no, some of you have noticed, right now, originally it was supposed to move up the East Coast, you know, and if, you know, eventually maybe affect the Northeast. Now what has happened, as soon as it kind of gets out of Georgia into the low country of South Carolina is going to take an immediate, if I say immediate, if a hurricane can make an immediate right turn. And some of the models have, once it makes that turn and heads out, bringing it back in for a second hit on the coast of either Florida or Georgia. So that's that's not good. So that's that's one of the things that we've got to kind of put away in the back of our mind that, that that possibility is out there that it could just make a giant loop and uh, head right back for us. So, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Chairman, is is there a barometer or a trigger uh, when the county will announce that it will no longer send out our first responders uh, to, and put them in harm's way? And I guess. When the Maybe wind. follow up on Alan's question. When, when, it, when is the trigger, and who calls the who calls that shot? It, it, we, it, it's based on the weather. Once once we have sustained winds of forty miles an hour and or greater, then at that point in time, it is no longer safe to send out our fire apparatus as far as our squads, fire trucks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So forty miles an hour. Is, is is the point where there will be no more uh, first responders available. And, you know, we we certainly want to, our, our number one is priority, our number one priority is the safety of the residents of this community, but also we have to look out for our first responders themselves. We don't want to put them in harm's way. Um, so. The 
So at some point, do we move first responders, trucks, and things out of the city? If we're going, if it looks like to a different staging area, what's the process and coordinate things with the city? That will be based on what happens with the weather. If the weather changes dramatically, uh, you know, in the next 12 to 18 hours, and I'm talking about as far as intensity and one thing or another, then adequate steps will be made to move equipment and things like that, I think. And I'm not going to, certainly I don't want to speak to the what the city is doing, but I, I think the city already has plans in place where once a storm gets to a certain intensity and a magnitude that they they move equipment up to the Golden Isles Speedway up on 82 up there. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? And thank you for being here, sir. So that's that's kind of the city's plans. So, Rick, Rick, uh, Woody, did you want to say something or ask a question? Yeah. Lanier Bridge, yes, but that's their but that's their call. That's that's the state's call as far as Lanier Bridge and uh, the the uh, Tourist Causeway. You said the state of the port is canceled today. It's on. Yeah. All right, Mr. Chairman, will you entertain questions from the press? Follow up questions. You did a very comprehensive uh, announcement. Larry, if you need if you need something, you can see myself or any of the other commissioners at the meeting. We'll be glad to help you. But thank you, Mr. Smith, for bringing that up. All right, uh, commissioners, anything else y'all like to discuss? You know, I would say the people on St. Simons and these islands. You know, I remember evacuating months before. It took me ten hours to get to Montgomery, and ended up nothing really happened. And of course, I felt like an idiot because I spent all that time. But if you're on those islands, you got some place to go. Get out. Just go ahead and get out, please. Because with oak trees come down over there, you're not going anywhere. You lose power. Could have all kinds of issues. If you if you can get out of Dodge, just go ahead and get out. The big thing is water across that causeway. Yep, yep. When my wife and I were talking about this morning. She asked me, "What are we going to do when the lead, when we if we lose power for?" You know, days and days. I said, you and I are certainly going to get to know each other well. So, having said that, commissioners have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. And a second. Thank you, commissioners.